Okay, so step number one, balance equation. Step number two is what's given. This is just like unit one, what's given. Frequently, it's going to be in grams. Now, let me show you a typical... problem for our unit four, okay? I know we're in unit three, but for unit four, let's see. Okay, for the combustion of methane, CH4, to carbon dioxide and water, how many grams of water are produced if 15 grams of methane are consumed? Now, this is a very straightforward stoichiometry problem for unit four. First step is to write the chemical reaction. Combustion involves reactions with oxygen gas, O2. So that would be number step number one. Now, is this balanced? No. One carbon in each side, two oxygens, Oops. And then four hydrogens and two hydrogens, okay? So it's not balanced. Balance it, okay? So what we're gonna do is we need four hydrogens. That kicks this up to four oxygens. That kicks that up to four oxygens. So now it's balanced. Okay, so for this problem, what's given? Go back to unit one now. What's given? 15 grams. And what are we trying to calculate? Grams of water. Now this is grams of methane, grams of CH4, not, we need to go to grams of water. So this is why we balance the equation, is to get us from methane to water. Now, the issue though is, there's no straightforward way to go from grams of water to grams of methane. So we have to go through an intermediate step. So we need to go from grams of methane to moles of methane. And I haven't talked about that. I'm going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. And then once we have moles of methane, we can get moles of water. And then from moles of water, we can get grams of water. Okay. 
That's why we balance the equation, is that middle step. Okay, so what's this thing about the mole? The word mole, Okay, it's a very common unit in science, in engineering. This unit is the basis for almost all the conversion factors in chemistry. It's such and such per mole, such and such per mole, electrons per mole, trans, you know, all this stuff. It's always per mole. Now, in your lab last week, on the second page of the calculations, they talk about moles of copper sulfate, hydrate, moles of copper sulfate and hydrate, moles of water. So this mole, that's why I wanted to delay the calculations is because I wanted to talk about in lecture moles. Okay, so The word mole comes from molecule. So if we look at a balanced equation, Coefficient in the balanced equation only works for moles and molecules, not grams. Again, this is why we're balancing the equation. So we can get that ratio from the balanced equation of the coefficients. Yeah, because moles are numbers. How many? How many molecules? How many moles? Grams is just how much they weigh. Okay, so a balanced equation is a numbers game. In terms of how many, if we go back up here, this, this balanced equation now says that one mole of methane will react with two moles of oxygen. That produces one mole of carbon dioxide, two moles of water. Nothing to do with grams, no exceptions. Molecules. One molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen, which produces one molecule of carbon dioxide, two molecules of water. So mole and molecule can be interchanged. And that's why the word mole comes from the word molecule. So that's why we have to transition from grams to moles before we can do anything. So that's gonna be the focus today is how do you do that? Now, in all disciplines, we have common units of conversion. If you're an egg farmer, what's the conversion you typically use? Is it a ream? Doesn't, right. Okay. If you're a paper manufacturer, 
You're working in reams. How many is in a ream? 500, right. And if you're a chemist, you're going to be working with the mole. Now, let me show you something about this. Notice as we go from eggs to paper, the paper is tinier than an egg. Notice the common unit goes from 12 to 500. It's just for convenience. So what about when we go from a paper to atoms? Is that, are atoms tinier than a piece of paper? Lots tinier, right? So that number instead of 500 is gonna be lots bigger than 500. Let me show you how big it is. Six point oh two and ten to the twenty third. That's six with twenty three zeros. That's a big, giant, gigante number. It's huge, and that tells you how small atoms are because that number is so big. What was your question? Oh, no. It's a funny number too, the unit. Yeah, her comment was that there's an actual, you know, like we go um, thousand, million, billion. This is like Petra Petra, something like that, crazy like that. Hi. Okay. So on the periodic table, We have decimal numbers, okay? We have decimal numbers. What that decimal number is, if you take six point zero two times ten to the twenty third atoms of oxygen, it's going to weigh. 16.00 grams. Of carbon, it's going to be 1201 grams. So we have a conversion factor now. Actually, we have two conversion factors. Okay, so for one mole of oxygen we have 16.00 grams per one mole and of course it's conversion factor that means the inverse is also true And we have one more conversion factor as well. Six point oh two times ten to the twenty third atoms or molecules per one mole. And then of course the reverse is true. So the guy that discovered this number, his name is Avogadro. And if you shop at Trader Joe's, who shops at Trader Joe's? Anyone here? Okay, does he, does he still do um, uh, the guacamole? I'll say Avogadro's guacamole. They used to do it all the time. I don't know if he still do it or not. Um, all right, so whenever you see 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, it can, it's a counting number. Like you can have a dozen atoms, a dozen ducks, a dozen chickens, a dozen students, 
You can also have a mole of students. You can have a mole of chickens. It's just a counting number. So whenever you see in the problem how many, how many particles, for example, how many think Avogadro's number, 602 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so we have four conversion factors now. Yeah. Good question. This is rounded. So three sig figs. Thank you for asking that. Good, good point. And these decimal numbers are also rounded. So for example, the uh, example I gave you with oxygen, that would be four sig figs. Thank you for asking. Good question. Okay. Um, Now, interestingly, um, we're going to be talking a little in this class a little bit of, about gases. And with gases, with gases, we can talk about the density of the gas. For one mole of any gas, regardless of whether it's uranium hexafluoride or helium. 22.4 liters is in one mole. Okay, doesn't matter what the gas is. So that's any gas. Any chemical. And the grams per mole is specific per chemical. So any chemical, as long as it's a gas, 22.4 liters per mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, any chemical at all, because you're just counting atoms or molecules. But this number with grams per mole, and the name for that is, which is the first question on your pre-lab for last week's lab, is called molar mass. Sometimes you see it as atomic mass as well. So the molar mass is grams per mole, or moles per gram. And it's specific. So you have to know the formula of the chemical before you can figure out the molar mass of that chemical. So. Know these. You will not be given these next week on your test. It will be on the test, but I'm not going to give you those numbers. You have to memorize those. Now, what about the other one? What do I always give you on every test? Periodic table. And what's on the periodic table? Molar masses, right. So I'll give you the periodic table. So no memorizing of that. I want to warn you, though, some professors in this department do require you to memorize a certain amount of the periodic table. And we have smartphones, and I don't believe in memorizing stuff. You can look up in three seconds. Where is this? Uh, Professor Eugene Lind. Some of them you'll know because you use it all the time. Oxygen 16, carbon's 12.01, hydrogen's, um, you know, one oh, and this periodic table is round, um, rounded to the two decimal places. Um, helium's four. I mean, those are the common ones you'll use all the time. Um, and so you'll, you, you automatically memorize them because you use them so much. The others, you won't. Uh, yeah, any over one mole or the inverse of that also. 
is a conversion factor. Okay, so one applies to, to gases. Now, because gases are compressible, it depends on two factors, temperature and pressure. So whenever we say 22.4 liters per mole, that's at standard temperature pressure, STP. So the main thing is, in here, we're always going to work with standard temperature and pressure. When you get to 1A, 2A, or 3A, you'll be working in non-standard temperatures and pressures. OK, are we OK with these conversion factors? Any questions about it? All these conversion factors are not infinite in terms of precision. They all have three or four sig figs in them. Now, because we're going to be working with this guy, make sure you use EE on your calculator. OK, so let's go and do some problems. Okay, so this this is where your lab last week. You took copper sulfate, hydrate, warmed it up, hot, drove off all the water, and then we weighed what's left over, which is the anhydride. What left was the water. On the second page of your calculations, it asks you for the moles of hydrate, the moles of anhydrate and the moles of water. So we have grams of copper sulfate, Times. Yeah. In this case, it's subtracting. So if we try to subtract the anhydrate from the hydrate, we end up with the water that left. So what we need to do now is calculate the moles of water. Let's say it was 1.2 grams. How do we go from grams to moles? What conversion factor are we going to use? What immediately has to cancel? Grams. And what are we trying to calculate? Well, we need to know how many grams for water is in one mole. Okay, what's the formula for water? H2O. So we need to take two H's off the periodic table and one oxygen. Okay, so 101 twice is 202. Oxygen is 1600. 
So that's 18.02 grams per mole. So the molar mass for water is <laughs> Mark of the devil. <laughs> Moles of water. This is just like unit one with some chemistry thrown in. Sorry, what did you get the one point two programs? I just made it up. I just said, for your lab, say you ended up with 1.2 grams of water after you subtracted. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? You subtract the hydrate from the anhydrite. I just say, say your lab ended up with 1.2 grams. But you asked how you got 2.02, is that your question? 2.02. Oh, you mean when I, yeah, each hydrogen is 1.01. .01. We have two of them. Exactly, the, the, the decimal numbers on the periodic table is the molar mass of those elements. So the molar mass for hydrogen is 1.01. .01. Two of those is 2.02. .02. For oxygen, it's 16.00. So that's combined 1802. Was that your question? Okay. All right. Let's continue on with water. Okay, how many molecules are in 0 0.0666 moles? Okay, so what's given? What's given? I want to know how many water molecules is that? What conversion factor are we going to use now? Moles have got to cancel, right? What's the top number? No. That's grams. We don't we don't care about grams right now. Yeah, we're looking at the 
how many? Remember, when you think of how many, think of Avogadro's number, 602 times 10 to the 23rd. So moles cancel gives us number of molecules. This is definitely an EE question. So we have So 401 times 10 to the 22 molecules of water. Now in two steps, we went from grams to the number of molecules. Intermediate step was moles. So from now to the end of the semester, one more weeks, if in doubt, convert to moles. Because most things are per mole, per mole. So as an intermediate step, you can always depend on converting to moles. Sig fig wise, three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. By the way, I'm giving your test back in lab today and tomorrow. Uh, and like always, check my subtraction, uh, if you have a question about whether your answer is right, um, we'll talk about it. And also, if I made a mistake on subtraction and you have, and I gave you more points than you deserve, it's a summer gift. Okay, any questions about that? Yeah. I didn't divide, I multiplied. So you, you punch in. I'm not sure I heard your. Yeah. They're not used interchangeably. In terms of a balanced equation, there are two things you can say about a balanced equation. The coefficients relate to the number of molecules or the number of moles. So molecule, you know, like going back up here. Okay, so this, this equation up here at the top, methane burns in oxygen, gives carbon dioxide and water. One mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen, gives us one mole of carbon dioxide, two moles of water, or one molecule of methane reacts with two molecules of oxygen, gives us one molecule of carbon dioxide, two molecules of water. They're not the same, but the relationship in the balanced equation is the same. And it has to do with the ratio of the coefficients. So that was a good question to ask because it allowed us to review that. All right, so let's continue on with this water question again here.
bless you. All right, how many hydrogen atoms are in 1.20 grams of water? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm not saying how many molecules of water, I'm saying how many hydrogen atoms. Now this relates to a very simple question if you're a bicycle mechanic. If I have 20 bicycles, and took them all apart, how many wheels would I have? 20 bicycles gives me how many wheels? 40. How did you get that magic number? Everyone knows how many, what is the ratio of wheels to bicycles? Two to one, right? And to get that, you multiply the two to one ratio times the number of bicycles. So let's look at water now. How many atoms of hydrogen is there in one molecule of water? No, two. Two atoms, hydrogen, for one molecule of water. That's a conversion factor. Okay, so we need to know that. So we have... So two hydrogen atoms per one water molecule. Now the conversion factor. Okay, so here we have a problem. How many hydrogen atoms are in 1.20 grams of water? So what's given? One point twenty grams of water. And we want to calculate number of atoms of hydrogen. Now, remember when I said, if in doubt, convert to moles. Because we don't have a conversion factor to go from grams to hydrogen. We do have a conversion factor to go from grams of water to moles of water. That would be the molar mass for water, 18.02. Now we're in moles. Now we can convert to, if we know moles, we can get how many water molecules are in the moles by using Navogadro's number. Now we're at molecules, not hydrogen atoms. And what conversion factory to get to hydrogen atoms if we know the number of molecules? Hmm? How many? Two. This is a bicycle problem again. So moles cancel, molecules cancel, we're left with hydrogen atoms. Okay, is everyone okay with, we ended up with number of hydrogen atoms? Yeah, like we need to put two by the wall of that. So units cancel. Mm -hmm. Hydrogen atoms over molecules. See, when you did the Avogadro's number, that gave you molecules, not atoms. We don't want molecules, we want atoms. 
So you know the conversion factor to go from molecules to atom. That's the two over one. Right, but then it would just be two. Yeah, well, you multiply by two, right. Right, but then why do you do that? So all of that is just showing your work? You mean why we had to add all that in? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could have just wrote written two, and it makes perfect sense with H2O. Except you would have lost points on your setup. As you don't fit work. Where your units cancel, correct. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, which is simple conversion of two. Right. Yeah. And you would have got the right numeric number, but not the correct units. Does that make sense? Because it's just a small. Mm hmm Okay, so that's how many hydrogen atoms, three sig figs, 802 times 10 to the 22nd. Multiply, because it's on top. And anything on the bottom, we divide. So the only thing on the bottom that's not one is 1802. Better? Okay. This problem here is about as hard as you're going to get in terms of moles and all this stuff. Quick question. Though. Why did you write that when it's just two? Like, why did you write the 8.02 times 30? Because I had to get the grams to cancel. That's why 1802 is on the bottom, not the top. If it was on the top, it wouldn't cancel. Remember, given is always has to cancel. And since yeah. grams is given, the next conversion factor, grams has to be in the bottom. Otherwise, it won't cancel. Yeah. Atoms are what? Correct. Good question. Atoms, the number of atoms per molecule are is always a whole number. Never, no exceptions, a decimal. In fact, Dalton said that. Okay, what are we doing on time here? It is. Let's do another problem. Okay, are there any questions about this? Yeah. The what steps? Yes. That's what you wanted, right? Yes, thanks. Yeah. That's 1802. That comes from the molar mass for water from the periodic table. Um, Adams, correct. It is a whole number. Yeah. But it's in scientific notation. So that's 
eight, zero, two, and um, 20 zeros. <laughs> Whole numbers. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's a scientific notation, um, depends on the exponent, whether it's a whole number or not. So if it's point two decimal places, if the, if the exponent is higher than two, it's going to be a whole number. Otherwise, it's a, it's a decimal. OK, so let's do um, one more problem. and. Um, Okay, hey, how many water grams are in 1.56 times 10 to the 17 molecules of water? Yeah. Um, two. Oh, we mean after EE? -E? I'm sorry, it's 23. Because it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then there's a box with two in it also, <laughs> further down. OK, so we have, I want to know how many grams that many molecules weigh. So what's our given? A lot of molecules, all right. Now, some professors always want you to put down a chemical you're working with. And it's a good habit to get into. The reason why I like you to do it is because when we go to stoichiometry, it has to be there. It doesn't have to be there if you're not doing stoichiometry. But just get in the habit of always writing down the chemicals you're working with. OK, so now we know the number of molecules. How do we get to grams? If in doubt, convert to moles. Boom. And what has to be in the bottom to cancel the given? OK. Now we're in moles. How do we get to grams? Huh? Molar mass. Mole needs to be in the bottom to cancel. And for water, it's 1802 grams. Okay, three sig bigs all the way through. It's the lowest one. Now it's important to use EE for this calculation. So the way I would work this is
Okay, is everyone okay with this problem? Now I have a very good worksheet. Everyone need any more? <laughs> She's smiling. Another worksheet. <laughs> Go fall on a sword, right? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So does anyone need more time copying this down? Okay, so let's multiplication division doesn't matter the order because they're commutative. So if we go to unit four files, here's some equation balancing practice if you want more of that. Um, and the, what I want to do is go to Uh, lab related. Okay, there's one worksheet that I don't see. I don't know why it's not there. I'll have to add it. There's going to be another one on um, practice problems. And I'll find that in. Um, in lab, put it up today. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover today. Oh, let me do one more problem for you. Um, okay. Um, I haven't done any gas problems. So, um, So how many liters of water, I'm gonna say gaseous water, are in 1.2 grams of water. Okay, and I'm gonna put in parentheses, STP. Because once it's at STP, we can use the 22.4 liters per mole. So the given is 1.2, grams, like always, we're going to go to moles. This gives us moles, and now we can go to liters. At STP.
1.49 liters. So three conversion factors, molar mass from the periodic table, 602 times 10 to the 23rd, any chemical, 22.4 liters per mole, any gas, as long as it's at standard temperature pressure. Okay, so that's it for today. And I will see my Monday lab people in a little while.